My name is Jody Domena. I am 18 years old and I feel unwanted. My name is Raven. I'm 24 years old and I want to enlighten and empower. I'm Kwasi Farrell. I'm 19 and things have to change. This girl I went to middle school with, her name was Anna. She called me a spick and she used to bully me in school. When I was seven, my family and I moved to Long Island. Um, my Before that, we lived in Queens. I have two younger brothers, my mom and my dad, um, and we all lived in a one bedroom apartment. So it's really tight once I was getting older, I'm the oldest, and my brothers were getting a little bit older. Um, so my dad bought a house and we moved out there. And I think what I really noticed was there was definitely diversity in the area I lived in on Long Island, um, but there were definitely cliques. There were the white people, the Spanish people, and the black people that all hung out together. There was no really like intermixing. Um, and that was, I was in second grade. I was exposed by this young man, you know, um, and screenshots were basically put up on Facebook of me and his conversation. Um, basically, me telling him that I liked him and him not really being into it. So, I am just scrolling down my newsfeed and a couple of hours go past, I get a text to say, look on Facebook. And all of our messages are on Facebook basically, but incriminating me, not more so him, but me. I went to a teacher and I asked her what spick meant. And then she told me and she just told me to leave her alone. That was all. I don't want my kids to feel like they need to hang out with certain people and feel like they can't be in a certain group because they're colored or, I just want my kids to be comfortable in a free country because this is a free country where you so I obviously hung out with the black people because it was kind of taboo to branch off into another, you know, group. And they used slang, like, you know, if something was like Avenue, they'd say Ave. And I remember being in the car with my mom and we were driving to the library. And the library is on Central Avenue. And I remember saying, oh, we're going to Central Ave. And my mom just stopped the car and looked at me and she said, don't say Ave, say Avenue. Say the entire word, don't use slang you'll thank me one day. And it's funny, cause like, I kinda do. I mean, I wouldn't say I talk white or I talk, you know, different, but I mean, I definitely enunciate all my words. And I think from a young age, like my parents instilled that in me cause they didn't want me to come off different or, you know, anything like that. So they would basically say things about me and, oh, you know, he's a faggot and, Oh, um, I don't really like him, but they really never knew because they never really been around me. They don't know. It's like Donald Trump is our president, a businessman. No experience with politics. What are we gonna do? For him to say the things that he's said and committed the acts that he's committed and face no repercussions, um, Unfortunately, it's not shocking because it happens every day in America. And I don't think that, you know, that specific topic strung a chord. I mean, it's definitely sad and it's terrifying that that's someone that has power. But I mean, there's a lot of people with power that get away with similar crimes and say, similar things about women. That's kind of the norm. It doesn't make me feel any type of way because I expect it from a person like that. I expect it from a person like Donald Trump, honestly. And I seen a debate with him and Hillary and he kept on saying like art in the cities need to change like you just said, but the inner cities have the most talented, intellectual, smart people in this world and people don't even see that. You know, it's just it's, it's just sad sometimes. The people that get recognized for doing different things are the people that don't work as hard. I know people that I grew up with that work as hard and still are stuck in the hood, or shall I say the inner city. So the more we separate, the more this country is just gonna fall. It's just gonna go down. We all have to come together and just unite. The United States of America. <laughs> have those conversations with your friends that are minorities or your friends that don't feel safe. 
they're gonna appreciate you coming up to them and asking, what can I do? What don't I understand? And being open, like a sponge to absorb the knowledge because that's what's gonna make a difference. Not saying you're better and I don't understand that and you're overreacting and you're dramatic because if you have any of those responses, you can't grasp your privilege and the fact that you will never understand. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with never understanding. There's nothing wrong with not being able to grasp it, but there is a difference to choose to be an ally and to talk to those people and figure out what you can do. Lastly, just remember, we are all a product of our environment. If you influence the next person to be better, they will be better. For human. Every single person that you just saw is just a person. We all walk away at the end of the day thinking about everything that just happened to us. People like me, a straight white male who doesn't have to deal with any of these troubles. It's really hard to take a position like mine and look at other people and say, it's not that hard. I don't know what they're complaining about. You never have to face things like that. So when you hear stories like this, it's important to recognize that these people do hurt. These people have to adapt to live in a white person's world so they don't get hurt. We're brothers and sisters, we're in this together, and let's make sure that your life doesn't have to be as hard as the rest of the world is making it out to be.